They slither up and attack. Making a movie. Yeah, what are we making a movie about? If you suffer from a phobia of snakes, you probably find it impossible to feel comfortable anywhere around them. Even the idea of a snake, or the word itself, is enough to send a shrill up your spine. Well, you are certainly not alone. In fact, millions of people from around the world are terrified. The question we wanted to know was, why? My friend Kyle has one. Her name is Lucy, and she's the devil. But I was attacked in my pool once. <laughs> How did that happen? Um, I was swimming with my friend Nicole, and there's a waterfall in the back, and it came down the waterfall and came after us. They lose skin. It's one thing to lose hair like a dog. I don't like skin. <laughs> Evan here owns a snake. Kevin. Yes. <laughs> is it small or is it a large snake? I don't like anything even slightly scary in movies, so I kind of avoid scary movies altogether. <laughs> you, guys, you guys got a cat back there? Is that your cat? Yeah. No, it's not our cat. It's, I, we think the neighbors left it. Oh my god! <laughs> That's not funny! <laughs> People may be afraid as a result of a bad childhood experience, or from watching a TV show where someone was bitten, or maybe the good old parents were afraid and pounded it into their children's head that snakes were and are extremely harmful. Regardless of the reasons for snake phobias, snakes have a bad reputation. But as documentarians, we wanted to find out more. Are they really as bad as their reputation makes them out to be? And who actually owns snakes? What is it like to be a snake lover? What is it like to be a snake hater? And why the heck are they getting this bad rep? So we decided to go snake hunting, or uh, snake researching. And as we found out through research, snakes aren't bad at all. In fact, they're pretty harmless. Well, we're talking about the guy that came out of this. Yeah. Check it out. What's that? That is a skin. It was shed in one full piece. He has a big water ball because he's a big guy. And I'm a short lady. Has he ever bitten you when you stuck your hands in? No, not me. He knows better. Well, what's his name? His name is Snappy. Why is his name Snappy? Oh, that's another story. Well, why don't you tell me the story? Oh, holy shamoli. Well, it was a feeding experience, and Dad doesn't know about this, so we're not going to show him this part of the movie, but um, he bit Kevin, he unexpectedly. Did. You're not really supposed to feed snakes in their cage, because then they might not like the fact that you're putting your hands in there and think you're food. But this guy is so big. And so nice, you can't. So when Kevin was trying to do things by the book, he got a bite. Of course, Kevin said it didn't hurt. I don't believe it. Here you go, Snappy, some fresh water for a big boy. Oh, now this guy he is about, happy. at least, I'd say 40 pounds. Maybe more. Yeah, did he eat j -Lo? No, I don't think so. Wait, his tail. Holy mackerel. Ah! He's big and squirmy today. Oh, I've already tried exercising with him, thinking it would make muscles, but it's not too easy. Well, this is not my favorite part. This is a frozen rat. Look at, oh God almighty, check out the tail on that one. Holy chamoles. The, uh, oh he's stinky. Um, that's what we feed Snappy. Because it was either that or bunny rabbits. And I could not give an Easter bunny to Snappy. So what would you do if Snappy bit you? Call you right away. And... Where do you have to go? No, never, because there would probably be a reason that it happened. We decided more extensive research on the so-called snake, this reptile that people misconceive is so horrible, and what to do about it was in order. So, we went to visit some friends. Hey, All right, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, Mark Kaplan. 
And what do you do here, Mark? Um, basically a hobby breeder. You know, a hobby I'm, breeder. Hobby breeder. Got into ball pythons and, and some boas. And started out with one snake and it kind of, like eating Fritos, you know. One shot and you start going for more and more and more. I always wanted to have a snake. Uh, some friends recommended a gentleman, uh, Bayonne in Hoboken area. And I uh, had a pet store called Hoboken House of Reptiles. His name was Damien Salgado. Went down there, saw his animals, and fell in love with uh, Brazilian rainbow boas. I really liked them. He had them. They were real pretty. And I bought one from him, came home, didn't know anything about them, didn't do any research on it. And sorry to say that the Brazilian rainbow is an animal that needs a lot of moisture, a lot of wet. I reversed it and kind of basically cooked the animal. And I felt bad, but I learned a good lesson, you know, be prepared for what you're going to do with them. Um, what is it about them that, uh, that you enjoy so much? <clears throat> just a different variety of them and different colored patterns of them and what you can do with them. Uh, I, I just think they're really cool animals. You know, just the, people have a misconception of snakes being slimy and sticky and ooey. And, you know, they're real nasty, you can tell. You know, they think they're going to eat you all the time. They, they're cold-blooded animals. And the minute somebody picks up a snake, it usually coils around them. People get scared and think it's trying to squeeze them. They're absorbing your heat because it's a cold animal. It always has to be warm. So I just think they're neat, and you know I like to play. You try to play genetic god is what you're doing, mixing more. Some good bite. Scared, scared of them? No, I'm not scared of them. I I have one nasty green tree python that I'm not real friendly with, but I don't handle them that much. But you know, no big deal. My my kids handle them. My sons handle them with me there. That's how we were raised. You know, snakes, nasty, always biting, devils. You know, it's association, guilt by association. Do you Adam think, and Eve snake thing. You think there's <laughs> any truth behind that? That that they're, they're evil? The no, not at all. Snake is not out to hurt you. A snake's not out to bite you, usually. It's, you know, if you call, came across a snake in the wild, it's more afraid of you than it. And people get bit by venomous animals because usually they step on them or they jack with them. You know, they do the old poke the head routine and don't know what they're poking. Here's some more information. In the United States today, there are over 100 species of snakes, only of which 20 types are known to be venomous. More people die each year from bee stings than from venomous snake bites. But if they do bite, it's like being grabbed by a dozen fish hooks. Okay, so you feel some pain. You'll get over it. Have but you ever been bitten by them? Yeah, can't you tell? <laughs> yes, I have. What do you do when you get bitten? I kind of laugh, kind of, you know, bite my lip and see how bad he bit me. Usually they just they just tag right there. Yeah, that's it. And he'll leave, he'll leave a little mark, a little bit of blood. You know, it's they don't latch on. See, that one did. You know... He's got a good bite, but I'm used to it, and I'm not freaked out by it because I know he's not going to hurt me that bad. He's just a little guy. If he was bigger, there we go. And just where he tags you. See right here? He came across. So there's a full mouth bite. Bottom row. See the mouth pattern? Upper teeth. <laughs> so I run, so to the I run to the hospital now. <laughs> <laughs> With bigger snakes, if they hit you or they tag you, is what I say, you get scared and you pull back and their their teeth are ridged backwards. So you're going to be pulling more damage to yourself. If you have enough, I guess, you know, bravery in you to hold on and just try to hold yourself still when they do bite you and then kind of peel them off you, it just hurt. It's going to hurt, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be as much damage as if you pull away from the animal because it's going to rip. It's kind of like a shark. Trying to morphine. cure someone of their snake phobia could take years. And even those who go through therapy may not always lose their fear. No matter what, Phobias of snakes are always going to exist, but we're hoping we were able to bring you to another world of the snake, a happy world. So snakes aren't as bad as you thought they were, and who knows, maybe one day, they'll be the new dog.